Hello everyone, welcome to Design Effective Reports in Power BI course. And in today's module, we are going to discuss about Design Power BI reports. In this module, you would get to know what are the correct visuals for your report. That means Microsoft Power BI already offers more than 30 visuals, which are the native visuals. And also you can import many custom visuals as well in Microsoft Power BI. But do you know which visuals to use when? Which one is the correct visual for your report and how to use it? Everything you would get to know in this video. So let's get started. In today's video, we are going to discuss first the introduction, design Power BI reports. Then we are going to have a look at the report objects, followed by report visuals. Then we are also going to have a look at the report visual to suit the report layout, like which report visual you should use for which layout. Then we are going to have a look at the visual selection and design. And lastly, we are going to present you some of the questions so that you can check your knowledge over there. As you know, you can design Microsoft Power BI reports either in the Power BI desktop app or on the Power BI service. This is currently not available for the mobile application. In a report structure, you will always have visuals and elements. Now question comes, what is a visual and what is an element? A visual is a visualization of a data set. That means how you would like to visualize your data. And if I'll talk about the element, Element is the one which provides visual interest, but don't use dataset data. Elements include your text boxes, your buttons, your shapes, and the images. On your screen right now, you can see you have a report, and inside a report, you can have multiple pages. Also, within a one page, you will find your visuals and the elements. But always remember that only your visuals interact with your data, not the elements. Next, we are going to talk about the report pages. Similar to Microsoft Excel worksheet, you can add, rename, resequence, hide, duplicate, or three Power BI report pages. Report consumers navigate to visible pages by selecting a page tab that you can find at the bottom of your screen. And also, when you have published your reports on the Microsoft Power BI service, you can interact on your right hand side. You will see all those report pages. However, you should also remember that you can design your report in a way that you are going to put all the pages name that you have in your report inside your report page layout as well. The decision to create more pages depends on your report requirements. Strive for a report design that expresses the data in a logical flow on the page and between pages. A well-designed report often provides a high-level summary on the first pages with supporting details on the following pages. In Microsoft Power BI, if you would like to hide any of the page, you can do that. Just right-click at the bottom of the page and then you can hide it or unhide depends on your requirement. And also, you can use the page navigation or action button or bookmarks and many other functionalities are over there. Next, we are going to have a look at the report objects. So what are report objects? As you can see on your screen, we have basically three kinds of objects in Microsoft Power BI reports. One is a format options that you would find a format pane. And recently, Microsoft also have introduced one new formatting pane that is a very nice design which are going to consolidate most of the options under one pane. So this feature is currently in the preview. If you haven't tried, I'll request you to just turn on that preview feature into your Microsoft latest Power BI desktop app and over there you can start using that. Second comes the visuals or the visualizations. So these are going to help you to visualize your data. And lastly, the elements. That means you have your text, your buttons, your shapes, images, all those are known as elements. Now let's discuss about the select report visual. 
So as you can see on your screen, we have basically two kinds of report visuals. That is categorical visuals and secondly time series visuals. And both of them has their own way. And you should know how to represent your categorical data or time series data. So if you would ask me whenever you are working on categorical, you should go with the bar chart. And if you are using any time based or the time series, whether it's a date or year or something like that, then you should go always with the line chart. If you would like to know more, then there is already a series on our YouTube channel, which is going to help you to decide which visuals to use when. I'll provide you a link in the description section. So please go there and check that out. Next comes the proportional visuals. Proportional visuals shows data as a part of a whole. They effectively communicate how a value is distributed across a dimension. Column and bar chart visual work well for visualizing proportionals across multiple dimensions. Here you should note that they should be used when all values are positive or all values are negative. Now you can see that there are two different proportional visuals on your report. On the left hand side you can see it's representing 0 to 100 percent stacked bar chart visual and on the other hand you can see it's a 100 percent stacked column chart. Both are gonna yield equivalent results. For the very first that means on your left hand side it allows you to compare each store across the six product categories. Over here you should notice that the actual sales value isn't shown. Instead, the proportionals of sales is shown, allowing report consumers to determine which one is higher. If necessary, you can reveal the actual values as a tooltip. On the other hand, you can notice that the same information can be expressed vertically as a 100% stacked column chart. It also yields equivalent results. In Microsoft Power Bay, we can also use the numeric visuals. That means if you have to represent some KPI values, for example, your total sales or total orders, all those kinds of things, we can use a card for them. So the numeric values show high level call out the demand immediate attention. That means all those KPIs, they can be powerful in dashboard and analytical reports because they communicate important data quickly. Apart from that, we can also have the grid visuals, which are often overlooked. Tables and matrices can effectively convey a lot of detailed information. Tables have a fixed number of columns and each column can have express group or summarized data. However, in case of matrix, it can vary. Additionally, matrices provide one of the best experience for hierarchical navigation. They allow users to drill down on the columns or the rows to discover detailed data points of interest. The table and matrix format options provide a high degree of control to format and style of the grid values. That means if you want to add some of the indicator, positive, negative, up, down arrows or traffic light indicators, something like that, that you can use all of them. And recently Microsoft has also introduced the spark lines as a preview features for your matrices or tables. So please don't forget to check that out as well. Then next we have the performance visuals. In the performance visuals, as you can see on your screen, we have a contour of sales. Over here, you can see we have first our KPI, what is our contour of sales, and then also we have the target. Plus, we can also use another measures over there, which is going to show us what is the growth in our sales. Next, we are going to have a look at the geospatial visuals. You should always remember that whenever a data set has geospatial information, it can be conveyed by using a map visual. Microsoft provides different kinds of map visuals. When you will have a look at the visualization pane, you will get those maps. Power BI includes several core map visuals. Each visual offers various formatting options that, when appropriately applied, can help highlight geospatial data. There are many different kinds of visuals that you would like to use. For example, in the very first line, you will see sales by city are displayed by using a map visual and a field map visual. In this case, the granularity of the data is at the city level and the perspective is the entire United States. Because a high dispersion is between plot points, the map visual, which shows a bubble for each city, produces a helpful result over here. 
the field map visual of the United States can sufficiently convey city sales. So that's why in this case we should go for the map visual rather than the field map visual. In another case, on the second row, you will see the granularity to state level. The field map visual will produce a better result than the map visual in this case. The report consumers can determine relative sales by interpreting the color graduations. Next, we are going to discuss about select report visual to suit their report layout. So let's see how we can do that. Most of the times, as a report designer, you can choose between multiple visual types to meet your own design requirements. However, to narrow down the selection, you can choose the visuals that best fits the available space on your report page. So you should always consider the space which is presented to your report. Use a visual that is aesthetically pleasing while maximizing the use of the available page space. For example, now you can see on your screen, I have the same visuals, but their orientation is different. So always pay attention how you want to use a visual on your report and what kind of visual is going to be best suitable for your report requirements as well as for your page layout. In this section, our objective is to see common bad data visualization practices and learn how to resolve them. The very first comes over here, categorical line charts. Line charts imply that the points on the x-axis form an order sequence. If the x-axis is categorical, there usually no logical sequence. In this case, line charts should be avoided. Now we are going to move forward to another type which is time on the y-axis. As you can see on your screen, on the right hand side, I have a bad design. Why it's a bad design? Because I have my timeline on my y-axis, but still I'm using my categorical charts. That means my bar chart. That should not be the case. We should always stick to the line chart in this case, and that is going to visualize data in a much more efficient way. Sorting by category. Bar charts are very good at conveying categorical data points. However, when the data points are sorted alphabetically, it can make difficult to compare ranks on them. To help report consumers compare and rank data points, sort them in appropriate and intuitive way. That means, what you can do, sort them by sales value in descending order. That way, the highest selling products is shown first. So always, whenever you are working on that, Please try to sort the data as per the value, not by the category. Visualizing multiple dimensions. One of the bad practice can be that we are using a tree map over here, which is not a good idea. Complex data scenarios can arise when you need to visualize the value across different dimensions. For example, as you can see, you want to show sales by quarter and product category. As you can see, the tree map visual is a very poor choice over here because it's difficult to compare values across the dimensions. So what you can do? Well, in this case, the better approach would be to organize the data by using a clustered column chart. By doing this, it represents a much better view of comparison purposes. Now it's easy to compare quarter values within the product category clusters. Now, how we are gonna visualize crowded categorical data? This is another case. Well, of course, there doesn't make any sense to use your bar graph over here. So in this case, what I suggest, we should always go for the table or matrix visual where we can have our data by the products and then we can have the values and also we can use some of the indicators. For example, in this case, you can see the ranks. Lastly, we are going to discuss about the mixed sign values in proportional visuals. Well, generally we have positive and negative values and most of the time what I have seen that most of the people always try to use the pie chart. Well, in my experience, I suggest you try to avoid the pie chart as much as possible unless until it's very necessary and you think it's going to be 101% best fit for your report. Otherwise, always try to use the bar chart where you can show positive and negative values up and down. And also you can use your conditional formatting to generate the colors for this visual. And that's going to be the best design for your report.
Now we are going to check your knowledge. So these are the questions. You can pause your screen, have a look and help me to get the answers of these questions. I'll answer all these questions in our upcoming video. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. See you in the next video.